Hello, I am Manuela Izumwa and it's my pleasure to be on screen today to talk with you, girl child, and celebrate you on your International Day of the Girl Child. Um, for your information, I was once a girl, so don't think that I am out of your league. I'm not so much out of your league. Yeah, I was a girl, now I'm a mother, and I've really seen a lot in life, and I have a few things I want to share with you. I'm hoping that you pay attention. If you can't get your pens and your papers, get them so I can sit down and write. If your parents are around, your friends are around, your younger ones, siblings, also get them to sit down now. Because what I will share will not apply only to you, but to every other person. There's a lot to learn. The theme for this year is Digital Generation, Our Generation. One thing this theme tells us is that times have changed. In our time, there was nothing like digital so much. Most of the things we used to do were analog. Everything was just at the most lowest level. But now, you can be in your house and travel the world. I've told somebody once when my sister left us here in Nigeria and she went to the UK, one of the things that shocked me the most was when one day, we had to receive a fax from her and my sister sent a letter and she wrote it and put it into a machine and the machine here in Nigeria printed out her handwriting. I mean that day my head just swore. I couldn't believe that technology had gone that far. But even that thing I'm talking about is something that was even a cake at my time. We are in a different world from the world we used to live in. And in different times, you must have a different sense of understanding and a different way of managing yourself. And that's what I want to talk about. I'll be talking about netiquette. I'll be talking about the etiquette of a young lady on the internet because we are talking about our digital, digitalized time. Now, I remember when I was in secondary school, they used to tell us to get pen pals. I was in a federal government college, so they would tell us to write to people. I never did. And the reason is because of a story I'm going to share, which is the basis of what I'm going to be talking about, being careful. There is this lady who, girl at the time, who got a pen pal from India. And the story says that she wrote the lady, the friend, and exchanged pleasantries and did all that. And then the person replied and said, oh, it's nice to meet you, and so on. And after talking, the person said, please, can you prick a needle into your flesh and then post the needle to me? And the girl, when she received it, wondered why should she do this? She now took the needle and put it into a chicken and then posted it back with her letter. And then that person replied her asking, are you a chicken? I mean, it could be a fable, but from what I know, it could actually be true. Mysterious things happen. Who knows what she went to do with the blood? And from the day I heard that, I became very wary. I began to realize that not every human being is like me. I know I am good-natured, I know I am nice, I know I am God's child, but the person next to me may not be like me. And I learned from then to be a little bit more cautious. And that's what I want to advise you. As a young lady today, if there's anything you need to know as a young girl in our digital world, it is to be careful. It is to be so careful because everything you say can be recorded. Anything you do and print or write can be remembered forever. In fact, if you don't forget, if you don't remember anything, one thing I don't want you to forget is that the internet never forgives. You can say something and write something and keep it there and delete and hope that it never comes up again. But if you're not careful, it will come up. So please, be careful. I don't want to scare you. I want to put in as much God fear as I can into you. 
for you to understand that you must be very careful with your life and with your future. So please, if you're writing, I want you to think of the following things that you begin to apply in your life. Number one, if you do have a smartphone already, make it a policy not to share any pictures of yourself with people you do not know. Number one, don't share your pictures with people you do not know. Adding on top of that, I want to say to you, do not share your nudes. Sometimes it could be a boy or even a girl like you who will say, oh, send me a picture. I want to see how your skin looks. I want to see how your breast looks. I want to see how your buttocks looks. It is a no-no. No matter how perfect your figure shape is, please, that is your body and your body is God's temple. Please do not share your pictures with anybody. I know I'm speaking to young girls, but these stories, some of them you need to hear. There's somebody I know who is a friend of somebody who had a very, very painful and shameful experience. She was dating somebody. She was in university. University of, I think, in University of Lagos. That's where she was schooling. And she was reading law. And this guy was her friend. He had promised to marry her. But as she was going on, she began to realize that there are some things about his life that she didn't like. So she didn't want to marry him anymore. And she told him that, look, I don't want to marry you anymore. I've changed my mind. And the man was so angry. Unfortunately, the girl had already become sexually active with him. And in the times that they would be having sexual intercourse, he used to record, he used to take photographs. And as soon as she said no, he went onto Instagram opened an account, put all her nude pictures, put her sexual pictures, put videos with her face, her name, and then tagged all her family members and all the friends he knew of hers. And it was a public disgrace. It was God that just helped her maintain her sanity and remain in school and finish up. Please be careful. Be careful. Many times when mothers will be telling you, elder ones will be telling you, be careful about this and that, you'll be saying, oh, you're in the old generation. You don't know what is happening now. In our generation, this is how we roll. We have also rolled in our own generation. And some people rolled in dirty water, rolled in mud. And there's no mother, especially me. I don't want any of my daughters physical or spiritual, all of you, to roll in mud. So please, be careful. Apply caution and make sure you do and choose the right things for your present and for your future. I also want to tell you that online activity always leaves a trace. Do you know sometimes you make a post and then you delete and then you come back, somebody else comes back to read and the person can see that this post was edited. And you can even click on it and it will show you what the person originally wrote and what he removed or she removed. That brings me to the next point. That before you post anything, you need to be careful. Don't be in a hurry to press send. Read, read again, read again. Be sure you have your tenses right. Be be sure that the message you're trying to send is captured in the words you're using. Be sure that those things that you're going to write are going to be expressing what you really are trying to say. And don't just post. Because you could post and make mistakes. Do you know that there are people who have lost their jobs just by posting? There are people who didn't get jobs because of what they posted. They come for interviews, they write their CVs, they look at their paperwork, everything is perfect. And then they tell you, give us your social media handle. And they go on your social media handle. And all they see is swear words. All they see is abuses. 
of maybe the government in power, abuse of parents, and maybe different kinds of negative things. It doesn't matter how good your portfolio is. When they see that, they make a decision that this person will not fit in in our group. So please, be careful before you post. Another problem we have found on the internet is that when you get up there, everybody seems to be equal because everybody is posting. Nobody is seeing the face of the person that they are posting with. So somebody makes a comment and says, oh, I really believe that this train should have been on track A instead of track B. Another person comes and says, you stupid idiot, fool, what do you know? And that person abusing, maybe 16, maybe 15, maybe 19. And the person he's talking to could be 60. Older than him, older than, if, than even their parents. But because they are not seen face to face, they do not realize. Be careful what you post. This is a digital world. And I know I'm speaking to ladies. Things have changed. But you also need to be a step ahead of the changes so you will not fall prey to them. I want you to also know that, you know, thankfully we have GPS in our phones. It has the plus side, the positive side and the negative side. One of the things I will advise everybody, especially young people, get your family to locate you wherever you are. You can put on your GPS, go to Google, and sign your mother, your father in to know your position at every single point in time. But please, if you're doing that, you do it for only your family. Because people now have begun to track people. There was an issue with Snapchat a few years ago when people were complaining about how Snapchat was revealing people's locations. And a lot of girls got molested, got abused because their geolocation was showing. You need to be careful. It's not everywhere you go, you post. I am here, you post. You go here, you post. And people who are trailing, people who have nothing better to, to do in their lives, now know how to stalk you and be with you, shadow you until you no longer feel safe. So be careful about your location and how you, you um, share your location with people. One of the things I scarcely do, I scarcely travel and tell people where I am. If I want to show pictures of me abroad, most times I will wait until I'm back in Nigeria before I show those pictures. Because I don't want people knowing where I am at every point in time. Because it's not everybody in your space that is good. Please be careful. Another thing you need to know is that you need to be careful about your personal information you put on the internet. You can put your birthday, but you don't need to put your birthday here. You can put some details about your life, but you don't give all your information because there's something called identity theft. Before now, we used to think that those things can't happen here, but now it's happening. We have people who open accounts in people's names. I'll give you an instance. In church, you normally hear before our services when they will come up and announce that, oh, the pastor will not uh, ask you for anything. The uh, pastor's wife will not ask you for anything. Anybody who asks you, they are fraudulent. Do you know what happened? One day, somebody asked for money on the internet in my name with a fake account and actually gave the person an account number that had my name on it. The person went and paid in the money and then now sent, and I don't know why, it's after you've done the deed, you now begin to recall that you have access to it. The person now said, oh, see, I just paid in money into your account. And I saw account name, I don't know. Bank, I nothing to do with them. Identity theft is also coming into our country. So you need to be careful about the amount of knowledge you give people access to about your life. And please, do not friend somebody you do not know. Do not friend anybody you do not know. 
I am wary of people coming up and saying hello and being so familiar when I don't know them. There are many girls, home and abroad, who have been lured away by predators that just stayed on the internet and were chatting them until they became so familiar and they did not know that they were just pulling them with a noose to the point of their death. Be careful. If the person is not referred to you by anybody, do not friend. There is no popularity contest in this world. Nobody is going to give you any money because you have 1,000 friends on the internet. Those people don't know you. They don't care. Whatever you're showing to them is not even your true self. So please be careful. It's a digital world. It's a new generation. Yes, but you need to know how to manage it. All this I've said is caution on the negative side. But now on the positive side, I want to tell you that you have access to one of the greatest things in the world today. The internet, you can, you can travel the world in your phone, you can expose yourself, you can meet you know, people that you never thought you would meet, watch them, even be mentored by them. You can learn new skills. You can even go into business on the internet. Do not forget the positive sides. Please, you can be an entrepreneur. You can grow your ideas. You can increase your market sales. You can become great by using the internet rightly. And that's my advice to you. I've told you the negatives. I've told you what to avoid. But now I would like you to think, what could you sell? What could you create? What could you write? What is it that you can put out there that will not be limited to your locality in sales, but that can go to other countries, go to other nations, where you'll be paid back, not in Naira, but even in dollars and in pounds, and wherever you're even listening to me from, where they can pay you in any other currency. Look, there are ideas that can come into you that you can think about, you can brood over, and before long, you have built yourself a beautiful business that goes from generation to generation. All over the place, if you go onto the internet, you'll see startup businesses, startup businesses, and many of them started and grew because they used the internet wisely. Remember, it's a digital generation. It is your generation. It is your time. Take and make the best out of your opportunities. And I pray God takes you to the top in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>